Hello, my friend and friends. Uh, today I have an important message to share with you, and it's um, important enough I'm fighting a cold right now and all of that. I'm feeling kind of miserable, but I felt like it was worth it to issue sort of a public service announcement of sorts where I want you to stop wasting your custom properties and the awesomeness that are custom properties. Because people always do it like this, uh, where we have you know some custom properties all set up in the root, which is awesome. That's fine. No problems with that. Uh, but then if we look lower down in my code, we'll find stuff like this. So here, like on these sort of background thingies, I did them as custom properties. So then I'm putting the colors in there. And then I have the icons that I need to change the fill on for each one of them to have the right color. So I'm changing the fill of each one like this. And this is fine. It works, but it's a little bit annoying. And we end up with a whole bunch of selectors we don't actually need. So how do we improve on this? How do we use custom properties in a smarter way that leads to more maintainable projects and easier to deal with code bases? Well, it's actually pretty simple. And I'm actually going to delete all of this that I have right here, or let's comment it out actually, just in case we want to reference it a little bit later. Uh, and we're gonna dive in here and, and make some code. So let's hit save and you can see all of those colors disappear. And let's go back up now to the main selector I have for my plans. And let's look really fast here just to get an idea. You can see I have these three that are set up, very typical. We have the plan and then a modifier here that I'm using to control the colors and potentially make other changes if I had to. Uh, inside each one of those, I have my icon at the top, I have my title in there, just a paragraph, my price, and a button down at the bottom of each one. So nothing too complicated in the HTML. Uh, so the plan is for each one of these. And the first thing I would recommend when we have elements, especially like this, uh, or components or different things where you might have different colors for each one, this could even be for like your pricing tables. It could, there's so many different things that this could apply to. Um, it could even be for lists and other stuff where you have like different icon colors. There's a lot of different places where we could do this. I'd recommend using a locally scoped custom property. And we're going to be exploring the idea of private properties, or um, this term comes from Lea Veru, who called them pseudo private properties, um, as an idea of sort of stealing from JavaScript, where we just put an underscore here to sort of indicate that they are private properties. And I'll put a link to her article where she first explored this idea. Uh, in the description if you want to read more about it. But on my plan here, what we might want to do is, well, we had those two colors that were coming in and that background color was like that pseudo element, but it sort of looked like a shadow, like, you know, some sort of weird shadowy things. So let's just call that shadow. Uh, and the other one that we had on there was our icon. So we can just say icon like this. And we obviously need to apply something to each one of these. Uh, and again, this is just saying this is sort of like a private property. It's something that's unique to my plan. It's not something we find up in our root that we're just, you know, we're dealing with this locally right here. And what we're going to do here is actually use a custom property as well. And this can seem a little bit weird and I'm going to call it shadow, uh, but I'm going to give it a fallback, right? Because right now shadow doesn't actually exist anywhere. Um, I ideally wouldn't have that maybe existing somewhere, but we'll talk about why this could exist in the root as well and why that's okay. And for now, let's just say red, so it really stands out and we see it. Uh, or, you know, those were actually a bit faded. So we'll go with pink on those. And then here, my icon, we're gonna do the same thing, var of icon. And then on this one, we'll say that the default is red, just so it has a fallback that we can easily see. Uh, if this wasn't a demo, I would probably make those black, but you can make the fallback whatever you want. And because shadow and icon don't exist anywhere, these are the values that are going to be used if ever I use these anywhere. So let's go on that plan icon uh, that we have right there. And I'm going to say that the fill on those should be my var icon. And we can see that that's working fabulously right there. And then we can actually do the same thing. Let's go to that pseudo element that I had over here. So there's the plan before. And in this case, let's just say that the background of it, background is my var. Uh, and in this case, we called it shadow. And you can see that's coming in right there. Why is this better than doing it this way? And then we have the, you know, it's kind of weird. We have this double name and I'll get to why, like, why is it shadow and shadow? We'll talk about that. Uh, and if you've been watching my videos for a while, this isn't exactly how I've been using the, this idea of the, um, the pseudo private property, um, where I usually don't bother with this side of it, but I, it makes a lot of sense. And I want to share how Vera, um, explored this idea. Um, so now what we go down, we can go down to here. And here we had to have the selector for my before of each one of them. And then we also had to have the selector of the icon for each one of them, which is a descendant selector, which some people don't like having. Instead of all of that, I could just come and have my plan pram. And on that one, I do that my shadow is going to be my var. And then here we just say that it's my color yellow. And in this case, my 300 refers to the right one. And we can see it switched over. 
And let's just, we'll set up the other one too, which is my icon. So icon would be var color yellow 400, which is my darker yellow or more, more vibrant yellow. And we can see that comes in. And the reason this is working is if we come back and take a look here, we have the shadow, which is looking for a custom property of shadow without the underscore. And if it can't find that, it will go to pink. But as soon as we declare one, now we actually have a shadow and it's going to work. And the advantage too with this is I don't have any setup, but I could, you know, if shadow existed in the root, it would use that default value that's in, or we'll call it default, it use the cascade, it's being inherited into the plan and that shadow variable would work. But then if we did redeclare something new in a more locally scoped thing, like I'm doing here, it's going to work for that as well. So we can take my pram, let's set up the next one. So the next one here is my bike. And that one, I think for the two of them um, is my cyan color. And then I can take these two. And what I really like about this, uh, this is my rocket. There's uh, what I, I guess the main thing that I really like with this is I only need one selector and I'm controlling things that are inside of there. And of course, we don't need to stop here with this sort of thing. Like we have these buttons that are on here and we might want to make some changes to those as well. Uh, and that's a little bit where things can get more interesting here. And we're going to look at how we can actually change these shadows to be a little bit better and advantages with the custom properties on that as well. And, and a few other things. Um, but let's start with these buttons right here. So if I know that I want to make my button something that changed, like say it's a different hover color every time I'm hovering on one, I can come and create one of those. So we're going to say our button hover, uh, which will be our var button hover. And then here, let's just make it red again. Um, it doesn't have, you know, again, I wouldn't do this for production necessarily. Uh, or actually, you know what, we'll, we'll let's come here and do this as a, an, a another custom property because this could be a valid fallback as well where we can look at my color text, which is the current color that I have in the background there already. So if you ever want for fallbacks, you know, there's no harm in referencing back to other things. Um, the pink and the red here might not be great areas to start with. You could have better fallbacks. And that way, if there is no modifier, you're still getting something that's perfect. But when the modifier comes on, that's when you're getting uh, different situations or different things that are happening. So now what I can come down and let's set up my uh, button to be able to do this. And this is one area we will need a descendant selector. And one of the reasons I like this is because I can keep all of this the same and I have one class that's controlling all of these changes that are happening. I don't have to come onto my button and say, oh, this is a button yellow and then this one's a button blue and that one's a button purple or I have to worry about naming or anything like that. I just have my pram, my bike or you know whatever, this might be yellow, blue, name those things the way you want but then I'm not worried about modifying anything inside of there. I'm not modifying my icon class or I'm not modifying my button class. I'm just relying on this one selector that can handle it all. So let's come and actually we'll do it right here. So we can have then my plan and any button that's inside my plan can get these. And we'll look at why this is, is nice. Um, Cause actually just really fast. If I did this normally, I'd have to have my plan pram and then button or have the modifier class, like I said, uh, and then have to have this for each one of them. That's really annoying to have to repeat that every time I want that modifier to affect the, the button that's descendant inside of there. So in this case, we just say that I have my plan button hover and we'll do the plan button focus as well. And for this, we can just come and say that the background color is my var uh, button hover with the underscore here. And it's important when we're declaring it, we're using the private property version of it. Um, so this is sort of setting the stage up. And then when we use it, then we can just use the non underscore version of it. If you don't like that idea of, of you know, having that fallback in there, um, you could probably approach this in a slightly different way. It's just the main idea here is take advantage of your locally scope custom properties. So you definitely don't need to set it up exactly like this, but there is this nice benefit of having sort of we can rely on the cascade, but sort of break the cascade where we need to. Um, and it sort of just denotes as well that like where this is getting declared, my button hover should be something that I can find on my plan. It's not something I would go necessarily to find in my route. Um, so we get my button hover that's right there. So let's hit save and it should still work perfectly fine because that is going, let's just go look really fast. That's looking at this. It can't find that. So it's going to the fallback really fast. If I made this my uh, yellow, 400, we can see that they've gone to that yellow. So they're relying on the fallback color right now. So we'll go back to the text. So it has a nice default fallback. 
And then when we want to set it up, well, I don't need any new selectors. I don't need to worry about anything like that. I just come and this one, <laughs> the color of the text is going to be terrible on this one, but I just say my button hover is, we can just duplicate this actually, uh, right? So we just add that in there and we can come on each one of these, switch that. And this one would be my cyan. And then this one can be my uh, purple. And now the hover color for each one has switched over without having to worry about it. I just come in here and I have these options. You know, they become like levers that I can pull for the interior of what's happening within this element, which is just so nice. The other big advantage and one of the best things with all of this is the way that and this is really nice with transitions and animations as well when you need to make change, like small changes to things. But let's come and look at, I have this before right now as a pseudo element that I set up here. And I sort of needed to do that um, because I have a shadow on here, right? I have like a soft shadow. And when I first saw this, and actually I got this just so you know from I Code This, which is a website by Florin Pop, who you might know. And so it's a site that has like daily challenges that you can try out, um, right? So every day there's a new challenge that opens up. It's completely free to join. If you join for free, you get the daily challenge every day. And if I do the start challenge, I can actually work on it within the browser. The, you know, it's all here. I can do the challenge, save it, submit, see other people's solutions and stuff. It's a really fun site. I'll put a link to it down in the description. Just so you know, it is an affiliate link. So while well, you can join for free and do the challenges every day for free, if you do decide that you want to unlock more stuff and get the pro challenges and some of the other things that are available to you, then I'd get a small commission from that. So you'd be helping to support my channel at the same time, which I'd obviously uh, appreciate very much. But if you don't know them, very cool site. Uh, but yeah, as I was looking at this, when I first looked at it, to me, it, instead of creating a whole suit element, that makes more sense as a shadow. But then I needed that softer shadow on the inner bits as well. And the reason that presented a problem was if I take this off and I have that soft shadow that's already on there, right? So we have the plan and then I have my shadow. If I wanted to have a second shadow on here, I 100% could. Um, well, so let's come here and add a second shadow. I'm just gonna put a comma. And so I guess it'd be like negative one rem offset in both um, vertical and horizontal. Uh, zero blur, zero spread. And for now, let's, you know, we've been doing red as our example. You can see it comes in and it, it works exactly like I'd want it to. The problem now is if I wanna change this box shadow with a modifier class, I have to come in and redeclare the entire box shadow, right? So I'd have to come on my plan pram and have this one and change this one just really fast. We could do that one as yellow. And I have to redeclare the entire thing, even though the only thing that's in here that's actually changing is the color of the shadow, like the color here, nothing else, all these values, everything else is identical. And then I'd have to do the same thing on this one and make this one uh, cyan. And then I'd have to do the next one and change the color of that one. And, that's annoying when we have to redeclare entire things. And I'm sure you're, if you've done animations or transitions, you've done this as well, where you have to like add a different animation stop. You have a, like a stop in your animation. You might have to declare a whole bunch of stuff, especially with transforms that you've already done that aren't changing from step to step, but you just have to have it there. So it doesn't overwrite the existing thing because we don't want it to overwrite the other box shadow, right? And then get rid of the that soft shadow that was on there. We need to keep both of them. So that was actually why my custom property is called shadow too, because I saw it as a shadow. Um, but if we're using locally scope custom properties, I can completely do away with this and I can just come in and this would be my var shadow. Uh, and of course I wanna be doing that pointing at my um, private property. So with the underscore and hit save and look at that, it just worked right away. <laughs> so that's really awesome, right? And the reason I like this is personally, I find it a lot more maintainable and easier to deal with because there's a lot less code going on. I just have to pull those levers that I want. And so like, that's really good. And also just really fast, if I kept those um, as pseudo elements, I had a negative Z index on them to have to pull that Z in that background backwards, but that could actually be really bad because if I had a background set for like the area here, I'd actually lose it behind that. It's annoying dealing with negative Z indexes. So using a shadow also solves that problem. Uh, but another thing that makes it and another reason that I really love this and I've talked about this I keep going on about it But let's say I come in and I add another uh, one here and I'll actually it should be in my list But just for styling purposes, let's leave it outside um, just so it's nice and big at the bottom um, And we want this item to be like this is the important one, right? So it's my light speed and it's a bit bigger uh, But so I have this one and this one I have my plan light on there So I'm using the exact same HTML the only thing I'm doing is changing one class here at the top, nothing else through the entire thing. I update my text and then I just come down and let's just duplicate that one right there. 
change this over to my light and I don't have any custom properties set up for an additional color because I'm not forward thinking enough with these demos all the time. And then maybe this icon and this one can be lime and then this one can be like a light green. Um, and we get those colors that come in and everything updates, my buttons updated, again, the text color, I'd have to come in with something that could update my text colors too. Uh, but everything just comes in and updates without me having to do a lot of work. And of course, I'm doing this just with colors right now. This is not limited to only colors. You could be using this for absolutely any custom properties that you have set up and you might want to change that are within. And that's, for me, the real best part of locally scoped custom properties is you're dealing with the parent and you can have as many pieces inside that are all being controlled with one nice simple selector when you do need to make changes. And if you enjoyed this video and you like just general CSS tips and tricks and things like that, you might really enjoy this video that's right here as well where I look at how you can actually transition or animate from a height of zero to a height of auto with CSS only. And it's not even really that hacky or anything. It just works, it's awesome. Uh, and yeah, so check that out if that sounds interesting to you. And with that, I would really like to thank my enablers of awesome, Andrew, Michael, Simon, Tim, and Johnny, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.